Hi, so in today's video, I'll be covering another custom visual. This is the timeline sli slicer visual. So yeah, we'll get straight to our get data and we'll click on Excel and we'll import our data set. So this is the gold prices data set that we have here. Remember, you can just get the data set by Googling gold prices dot XLSX and you'll find it on the internet. And we'll wait a second for the preview and yes so the sheet name is daily prices and we have the years and the dates and the price of the gold now there is much more there are there is a lot more data here but just the preview is small because the data in the preview has been tr truncated due to size limit so the preview can give you a, just a you know s small idea as to what the data is because it can't showcase the entire data so what you do is if you want to make any changes you click on transform data but i don't see that i i don't think that i need any changes here so i'll click on load and once i click on load i'll wait for the data to be loaded into the fields pane right here the right side of the page so once the data gets loaded you'll see it right here and you know this by now if you follow if you've been following my videos you know this by now and we also know that when we want to click on a visualization we come to the visualization pane right here we don't need the filter pane right now so i'll hide that and before I get started with my visualization, there are a couple of things I need to work on, you know. So the year here is being summarized. Now, year is something that you don't want to summarize. So what you do is you click on year. And then, so if I click outside, just uh, look at here. We just have one, two, three, six tabs. Okay, we have file, home, insert, modeling, view, and help. Now, when I click on one of these fields, so when I click on year, two new tabs open up, a table tools, wherein I can manage tables and the column tools. So this column tool is for this year column. Now, uh, under summarization, it says sum. So you have a couple of options. You can have the average minimum, but I don't want, I don't want it to be not summarized. That is great. Now data category, it says that it's postal code or barcode. So if you have a postal code or a barcode, you could have, you could give that input to Pavia as well and it will take that input into consideration. So now you see that the summarization symbol, the sum symbol has been removed and gold prices are summarized, no issues and the date has been transported as well. So before I get to my time slicer, I'm going to draw a line chart. I'm going to create a line chart and let's extend this to the entire page because why not? Let's have my year in here. Actually, not my year in here. I want to have my dates and my gold prices. So, right now, what is happening is when I clicked on my dates, now it should have shown me dates, but it's not showing me dates. It's showing me three years 13, 14, and 15. Now, I don't want this. I want to see my dates. So, now what happens is if you come to the field well right here below the visualization pane, it breaks up the date into quarter, year, month, and day. So, what you can do is click on the down arrow and change this from date hierarchy to just a date. And so that then you will see the different dates. So now this looks, I mean, this is actually a very beautiful visual. So this looks pretty cool. And uh, now when you want your year as well, so you could have your years as well so that it will color it. So three years are colored differently. Nothing much, you know, it helps to identify, differentiate. And this looks pretty cool. If you come back to the formatting options under general, you have the, I think it's under X axis. Yeah one second yeah that's right here so the type is continuous you could make that categorical also so you'll see it this way but this is um not something i want to see right now so i'll make the back to continuous you could bump up the text size so this is now how the normal line charts look looks now what i'm going to do is i'm going to bring in okay so i don't want this visual i'm going to go to my app source and i'm going to import the timeline slicer you click on the ellipses click on get more visuals probably i recently had an update so that is why you see the difference in the colors and all you know, the visuals look a little bit like the, the colors have changed, they look a little bit different. And when I search for the timeline slicer, so which is the one, this is the one you want. So this is one by Microsoft. It helps. And so basically it's a graphical date range selector. It's used for filtering components in Power BI. So basically it's, wh wh where would you need this? You If you want to filter date by date dimension it's easy for that and it's pretty fun to do that as well so every year i'll add this and we all know that when in terms of financial data or marketing data you know or even irrespective of the industry when you have a lot of 
customer inputs or a lot of production data or about the products you need a date you need to have a look at date by date because in that what gives a more clearer picture so at the end of the month you need to know which day you did the best at the end of the quarter you need to know which month but then again in those months which was best the best week or which was the best date or day so what i'm going to do is click here outside so that my this visual does not get converted into a timeline slicer and here we have a timeline slicer this looks pretty cool i'll expand this a bit and now i'll have my gold prizes in here looks cool i have my year in here one second i'm sorry i have my date in here um one second yeah so i'll have my date in here so you can't add gold prizes my bad so this is a timeline size for date so uh, this looks pretty cool so now you have the capacity to select so you see the four th you see the three years and the quarters in each year so this is cool and you have the capacity to select whatever month you want okay and to expand you just have to move it, expand this way so you get the arrow to expand as well so no issues in that and you could you know select multiple dates as well so that is there and also if you look at the top left corner over here so this is a year so you could make this into a quarter thing you could make this into a year a week or a day so just to give you an insight why this slicer is useful one second huh? i'll make this a bit smaller and i'll import a normal slicer that we have in power bi so now if i wanted my year in here i could have my year in here okay click on year and i'll see my years if I don't want my year, I'll have my date there. So now I have to filter by date also. But then even in date, if I want the date hierarchy, I can have that as well. So I have the year, quarter, and inside each year I have the quarters, and inside the quarter I have the weeks, and the months, and inside the months I have the days. But now filtering this way and using this slice is much complicated. Okay, I don't want to be selecting each single day that I want to see. So what do you rather do? You import the timeline slicer. And if you have better options available, why not? I'm not saying that this slicer visual is not useful. It is. But when you want a specific date by date filtering property, you need to use this slicer because it is the best. Now, you see that I was on my date. So you can go back to your weeks. You can go back to your months, quarters, year, as you want to play with it. So, and as soon as, the, obviously this is like every other visual, so it's interactive. So when I have my, you know, uh, when I select a particular date or a month, it gets filtered. It's filtered as a line chart as well. So let's go from December to January, you know. That would look pretty cool, you know, two contrasting colors. So you see the breakup, this looks beautiful. So let's go and look, have a look at the filtering options that we have available here. So there's this thing called force selection. So you could turn that on. So the current period will that automatically be that. Latest available period, you know. So it'll go back to the, sorry, one second. So it'll go back to the last period of the data. So the fiscal year, so you could change the year. If you want to come back down here, you have those options as well. You could just focus in July, you could focus in June. Okay, so no issues in that. You could focus in February, yeah. And you could also filter the date. So when I, fourth so you could do that as well if you come down now pay attention to the timeline slicer here you turn off day selection you turn on day selection and my week starts at sunday but then i want to start my week on monday so this thing shifts okay so that is something that is available to us so let's not have that on let's have it as it is now the range headers are these Okay, so you see December 16 to 16. So let's select the entire thing. And let's come down to a range. So right now you see that I've selected January 13 to December 2016. For someone who's having just a first look, by looking at this range heading, you can easily identify the period that is selected. So you could change the font color. So I'll make that blue. So you saw that changes to blue. And you could bump up the text size. So let's do that as well. So that's clearly visible to everyone. You come down to the cells. So this is these are cells, okay? So you can change those colors. So you could make them you could make them black if you want. 
you can make them pinkish you know, whatever and you can also change the color of the unselected cells so now these are my selected cells and i want my unselected cells to look orange so they look orange so you have that option but let's keep them white and let's make this um it was gray i guess yeah no actually it was a little darker oh i'm sorry the unselected should be white and the selected one should be say okay that's good now if you come down to granularity granularity basically has to do with these five things over here seeing that i could change my quarter into years into month into week into days in just one click so you have that option available here so you could change the scale color you could make that i mean you could make that red as well so that entire thing becomes red you see that and if you come down to slide slide the color you can change the color of the slider as well so you could make that brown if you want that so slider is basically this border around the year option so you could have that here click here as well and now i don't know why they have this option available so i mean basically what i'm doing here is if i want to go from days to weeks and weeks to months and months to quarter i can just do that in one click i don't have to come down to the filter pane filtering options and then if i so i have this option available to me here as well um i don't think it's that useful i mean i don't know why it is here but then an extra feature doesn't harm you right but then it's easier to just filter directly over here rather than coming down to the filtering option format option and then come down and then change granularity so let's keep it at whatever it is so you can turn off your visibility you cannot see your so this option is nice this option is pretty cool so if you don't want to see your days you could have a days turned off so you'll just see your weeks months quarters and years you could turn off your months you don't want to see your months you could just have quarter year weekly quart yearly and quarterly so that that is also something that you can do so this is also a pretty cool option now labels you can turn them off you won't see anything so uh, why is this range header useful you know because then when i have a particular date selected i want to know which month to which month to select it. i don't want to scroll around so then the range header is useful for that as well in just one look you get to know how exactly what is the data that has been selected so i want this to be you know lightest brown no, actually not brown because that's the color of the granularity let's make it purple and let's pump up the text size so that it's visible to everyone seeing this video watching this video you can turn on the scroll post that option is also available to you you could have that option as well and if you come down to title you could add a title so right now my title is date so you could turn down so these are word formatting options you could change the alignment you can make a center you could bump up the text size you could change the font so you've got a couple of font options available here as well let's make Arial black makes a good heading and if you come to the background you could add a color so you could make this entire thing blue you could make this entire thing yellow i mean whatever you want and you could increase the transparency as well you could turn on the lock aspect in case you're trying to re resize this so the entire field which will remain the same in terms of the internals and you could put on a border over here so that looks great i'll just reduce the size so that you know that i've put a border so i've put a black border as you can see and if you click inside and go back down to your formatting options the general is where you position exactly how you want it to be the size you know the x-axis the y-axis the width of it that's not something that you want to do if you like if you're someone who's very detail oriented you could go and play around with that option as well but then that's not needed you could do whatever you want from out here for someone who does not pay very detailed attention i mean that detailing is not a normal detailing that's a very granular detailing you know so these are the options under the format tab you have available here nice visual you know and you want to have a filter by time instead of using the normal slicer why not use a timeline slicer that actually gives you the capacity the ability to you know filter between date ranges you know, shift entire date ranges select one month you could go down to week select a particular week you could go down to days select particular days as well so this is pretty cool you could have a couple of days so you want to see how things progressed over from the 17th till the 22nd 
you could see that as well so you had a dip on the 18th but then 21st I mean you did very good the price were hit price were quite high so this is a pretty cool thing you could have a year thing as well so you could have the entire four years selected then you come to days you have all the days selected seeing that in 2013 it was highest on uh, this was the highest yeah so this is the highest point 1689 on 21st January 2013 and since then it's been plummeting down so good war analysis good for analysis as well so thank you i hope you learned something new subscribe to the channel for more content and keep practicing remember updates coming out every month in power bi keep exploring keep practicing and hit that subscribe button for more content on power bi tableau excel powerpoint and right now yeah that's it that's pretty much what i'm doing right now so yeah i'm doing mostly of power bi i'll try to focus more on tableau as well but right now i'm gonna focus more on power bi so yeah pretty cool so hit that subscribe button thank you thank you for watching